the Walther WMP and 22 Magnum. Let's check it out. Two Magnum. Uh, it's just one of those rounds that's just kind of different. I mean, you have your 22 long rifle, there's tons of different options for it. 22 Magnum kind of takes it up another notch. It really makes a decent self defense caliber, especially for those who are recoil sensitive. Now, one of the things about the 22 Magnum is it is so soft to shoot, and really putting it in a semi automatic just gives you more capability. So when I was at NRA in Houston this past year, and I went by the Walther booth, and I saw that they had introduced the WMP for Walther Magnum Pistol, I was really surprised. I mean, there's not a lot of options for 22 Magnum in semi-automatics, and there's a number of reasons why. It has had some difficulties, um, and it has a lot to do with the length of the case. And it is a straight walled case, it's rimfire. And so really, the kel PMR-30 was one of the first, and also the uh, Rock Island Armory, they're 1911 in 22 Magnum. But otherwise, there's not been a lot of choices. So it was really cool to see Walder, such a legendary company, introducing a 22 Magnum. Now, this is, again, a 15-round capacity. It has optics ready, which definitely sets it apart from the other two. But guys, it is so soft to shoot. And yet, you can tell that there is power behind this caliber. Uh, the muzzle flash that comes out the end, the loud report. And again, it puts out only a 40 grain bullet that really makes this optimal. But man, it is something else to shoot at the range. Now, Nate from Guns on Deals sent the Walther WMP for this review, and we really appreciate those guys helping us out to bring a lot of different guns to you guys. The Walther WMP for Walther Magnum Pistol. This one surprised me from Walther. And I'll tell you, 22 Magnum, I mean, it's just a different type caliber, mainly for hunting, uh, revolvers, lever actions, bolt actions. Uh, because of the length of the case, has been one of the issues uh, to make this end of a semi-automatic. There have been some guns that are in semi-automatic, but one handgun that first kind of started it was the AMT Auto Mag, made back in the late 80s all the way through the 90s. Uh, and High Standard bought that company, but I don't think that they're producing a 22 Auto Mag. The kel PMR-30. Uh, this is a 30-round little pistol. I just did a review on this. I mean, these things surprised me at how much I really enjoyed it, honestly. Now, Rock Island Armory also makes a kind of a 1911-esque uh, 22 Magnum as well. And so for a major gun company to come out with a 22 Magnum, and I mean more of your premium type firearms, uh, you know, that is saying something about the caliber. Now, we, it carries 15 plus one. Let's go ahead and make sure the gun's unloaded. Uh, one of the things about this, and we'll talk about it in a minute, is it has four mag releases on here. And we have a 15 round magazine and you get two with the pistol. And we'll check and the gun is empty. Uh, first thing to notice is how easy the slide comes back. I mean, it is very easy to bring back. And so a lot of people are gonna wonder why in the world do we need a 22 Magnum? Uh, what is it? Why in a semi-automatic pistol? Well, definitely for hunting, it makes it great, but this is not necessarily the best choice for taking it out and to go hunting. So really, this is more toward the line of self-defense. I mean, we've got a bullet moving up to 2,300 feet per second with a 40 grain bullet. 
and it's according to what load it is. Typically, you'll get about 1,700 feet per second with something like this in a 40 grain. Now, it goes all the way from 30 grains all the way up to 50 grain. Uh, one of the things with most of these semi-automatic pistols is it works best with your 40 grain bullet. Uh, the 30 grain bullets typically cause some malfunctions. And it's one of the things we found out with the PMR-30. As long as we were using those 40 grain bullets, this thing ran like a champ. But the two issues that we had were with 35 grain bullets. Uh, the 40 grains ran fine. Now we're going to look at some different pros, cons, why you would want this, why would you consider it, some of the ammo choices that Walther recommends, and the reliability of the Walther. Now it has a four and a half inch barrel. It is optics ready. Uh, one thing I do want to mention about the optics ready is it does add mass to the slide. So having higher grain bullets, it's going to really affect your reliability if you're going to run a red dot. And you want to test out the loads to make sure. Now, one of the loads that I would highly recommend is a spear gold dot. Uh, that, if you're going to carry this for any kind of self-defense purpose, you need some really effective ammunition. And the spear gold dots, uh, 40 grain, they work very good in these. And they should give you reliability even with an optic. It does come with two additional plates, and I believe it's the RMR or Doctor footprint on those sights. Now this is not a small handgun. I mean, it's a fairly large handgun, and it's very reminiscent of the Walther PPQ. Uh, this is the PPQ Mark II. Uh, it has the same kind of configurations, but notice <laughs> that it's definitely larger than the PPQ. Uh, it has a longer barrel, even comes down a little bit in the grip. So it's a definitely larger firearm. This is not necessarily something that you would be concealed carrying. But one of the things about this compared to the PPQ is much more aggressive texturing on the grip. And it's really funny since Walther has gone to the PDP, this is still more in line with your PPQ. Uh, it is a hammer fired pistol, but it's pre-cocked when you pull the trigger. We'll look at that in a second. We have a memory pad up here at the front, so when you put your finger out here, you've got a place to rest your finger. Slide stop is protected by two ears, and it is ambidextrous. It's going to keep you from inadvertently hitting that slide release. You have your takedown lever here. One thing that's really unique, though, is the magazine release. And right here, you'll see that it has on this side and on this side in the standard configuration. But we also have the paddle mag release as well on both sides. So again, this has ambidextrous magazine releases on both sides of the pistol, and it has two different styles. Uh, you'll notice the grip comes up really high, and so it gives you a really good purchase on it, and it brings it up high. Now, it still has a fairly high bore axis, but with 22 Magnum, I mean, it is so soft shooting that it really doesn't have any effect on managing this handgun. The slide serrations are very deep. Uh, one thing I will say about it, it is an aluminum alloy slide, and that makes it really light so it'll come back and function those 22 Magnum rounds. We do have some porting in the slide as well, but not in the barrel. Uh, the barrel itself has a sleeve inside, but it has a steel outer sleeve. A lot of times they'll make these to where they're more of an aluminum sleeve on the outside. So the gun still has some decent heft to it, and a lot of the weight is out here on the barrel. You have a five slot Picatinny rail, squared off trigger guard with texturing, slight gap in between the grip and the magazine base. But again, I mean, there's so many different ways to drop this <laughs> with either hand, which I really like. And honestly, I am a fan of the paddle mag release. I know a lot of guys really like just the mag release on the grip. Blacked out rear sight and a very nice fiber optic sight. Uh, now with the back sight, you do have other options. Uh, they do include uh, at least two, according to the Walther website, I only received one additional rear sight and that just helps with elevation. And of course, you can move it side to side for windage. Now when it comes to the hammer, uh, when it's not cocked, it comes all the way back. But when we rack the slide, you'll see the hammer does come out just a touch. And that really just pre-cocks the hammer. And you'll notice too that pulling the trigger just brings that hammer back, but there is no pressure whatsoever. And so this is, even though it's a hammer-fired pistol, it doesn't shoot like a hammer-fired pistol. Honestly, it's more consistent like a standard striker-fired pistol. 
And when you're firing the pistol, you will see the action of the hammer. And then it goes all the way and recesses into the slide. And guys, once it drops, there's no second strike capability, which actually surprises me. A lot of times with hammer fired pistols, you can pull the trigger again. We have a trigger safety on the trigger, and that means that unless it's depressed, the trigger will not engage. And so we go ahead and we have take up right here, and then we hit a wall, a little bit of resistance, and then a nice break. It's not a PPQ break, but it's not bad at all. It's very crisp and tactile. Reset is a little far out, but still doable. Check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge and brown ales. Four pounds, 5.7 ounces. Four pounds, 10.3 ounces. When it comes to the magazine, we have a tab that pulls down like a lot of rimfire and it makes it really easy to bring back. Uh, there's no real special instructions on loading this. With the PMR30, I mean, you had to make sure that the rounds were set. This seems to put the rounds in the right place. Uh, when it came to reliability, we had no malfunctions. And so this is just a really good magazine. They are polymer, nice base plate, and again, you do get two. Here we have 22 long rifle, 22 WMR for Winchester Magnum Rimfire, or 22 Magnum, and then we have 9mm. 9mm is here just to show you the difference between the two, a little bit of a comparison. The 22 Magnum is 60% more velocity than your 22 long rifle, and it's two and a half times more muzzle energy. The 22 Magnum at 100 yards will still have 50% more energy than a 22 does at the muzzle. That gives it a lot of extra power. One of the big problems with 22 Magnum is the length of the cartridge. Uh, and because of that, sometimes feeding makes it a little bit more difficult. It is straight walled. But again, using the right loads, this can be very reliable. And with using the different self-defense loads they're offering now, this could make a good self-defense option, especially for those who are recoil sensitive. Now we wanted to test out the ballistics of the 22 Long Rifle and the 22 Magnum. So Clear Ballistics had sent one of their gel blocks, it's a 16 inch gel block. The 22 went 10 inches into the block. When it came to the 22 Magnum, it went all the way through the block. Uh, we weren't able to retrieve the bullet, so we couldn't compare them side by side, and we're going to have to do that later. But that just gives you a, an idea of the power that's going behind the 40 grain 22 Magnum caliber. And we were using the CCI Maxi Mags and the CCI Mini Mags for this test. Both were 40 grain. Now, while there has a recommendation list for your 22 mags, the CCI Maxi Mag 40 grain, they work good. The 30 grains, it says, works okay. Federal 22 Magnum. 40 grain works well. The Spear Gold Dot 40 grain works very well. And then the Fiocchi 40 grain jacketed hollow point works best. And this is the shooting dynamics. And all this is listed on the Walther website. And if you're looking for 22 Magnum to be a less expensive option, 22 Magnum is running about 24 cent per round, while 9 millimeter for your target loads is running about 20 cent per round. So 22 Magnum is actually just a little more expensive. Now the Waller WMP, one pound, 11 ounces. Waller PPQ, one pound, 8.2 ounces. So the WMP weighs more than the standard PPQ. When it comes to the kel PMR30, it weighs 15.4 ounces. This is super light. The WMP really handles more like a full-size pistol. Now we're going to be shooting some Federal 22 Magnum, also some CCI, and these are game points. So these have little soft tips, uh, and really easy to load these magazines with this little thumb lever on the side, uh, especially with 22, whether it's Magnum or 22 Long Rifle. I really like the way these load. And you're getting a lot of capacity. While their WMP, uh, I saw it the first time at NRA this past year, a little bit surprised. Uh, 22 Magnum, which is starting to gain some popularity, uh, but with Walther, it did. It just surprised me. A full-size gun has that PDP-type texturing, 15 plus 1. Be a great trainer. Gives you that little bit of extra power than a standard 22 long rifle. 
and can be used for self-defense. Uh, the fiber optic front sight makes it easy to see. But all the controls are your Walther PDP or your Walther series. That ergonomics is just, you know, Walther. And that they are one of the best for designing ergonomics for your handgun. People that are a little bit shy from recoil out to the range with this, and it gives them a full-size gun, but it gives them, again, just a little more power than 22. So um, just a really cool gun. And again, just shocked that <laughs> Walther put this out. No recoil whatsoever. It's just really soft shooting. That flame that comes out the end is very satisfying. <laughs> it's just nice. But very pointable, easy to shoot. Well, there's really doing some cool stuff. As far as disassembly, let's go ahead and drop our magazine, check the chamber, it's unloaded. We're going to pull back on our slide and put it into slide lock. We're going to take this lever right here and we're going to drop it down to 90 degrees. And then you release your slide and then you just pull it right off. We have our recoil spring and guide rod. It is polymer. And then we're going to remove our barrel assembly. Definitely a different type system. Uh, it is more of your linear movement with the barrel rather than the browning linkless design that does the tilt. Uh, you will notice there's a small little buffer right here at the front and that's to keep the steel from the barrel to be to engage into the aluminum receiver. Gives it some protection. This feed ramp is pretty definite. I mean this is a very unique design. When it comes to the slide you have your firing pin safety right here. Uh, but it's Walther and it's machined very well. It's very dirty. It's one of the things about rimfire. And there's a lot of little tiny shavings all through here. But again, we had no malfunctions. Here with the internals, definitely with your hammer. I mean, it is fairly complicated. Uh, this is a very unique design. There's a lot that's going on all the way through here. A lot of that has to do with the multiple mag releases. Of course, it is hammer fired. Uh, the rails right here rise up but um, definitely a unique look when it comes to this. But there are some definite similarities to your standard hammer-fired pistols. But disassembly is not complicated. Uh, bring in our barrel again for reassembly, our recoil spring and guide rod. Very light spring in this guide rod. And we're gonna bring it back over our frame, lock it into slide lock, bring our lever up. and we're good to go. Now the retail price is $549. Guns on Deal sells these for $499. Extra magazines run about 34 bucks. As far as pros and cons, uh, you know, it's 22 Magnum. It's not the ultimate self-defense round, but it is a capable self-defense round. Wouldn't necessarily be my first choice, but definitely capable. Why would I want a 22 Magnum for self-defense? Uh, if I was recoil sensitive uh, and I had weaker hand strength, this makes a great option. Again, that slide comes back really easy. Controls are pretty intuitive. I mean, you've got a number of choices with mag releases. I love that. Uh, it is a full size pistol. Great to take out maybe first time shooters just to give them a little bit more power than a 22 long rifle. Uh, but the recoil is very mild. Uh, the fireball that comes out of the end is just impressive has a lot to do with it just not expending all the powder when it comes out of the end of the barrel. These were made pretty much for rifle length barrels. You have your Picatinny rail so you can mount lasers and lights. You have optics ready. Again, you want to be careful. And that's one of the cons is because of this design and this light slide, you're going to have to have a fairly light optic on here. Plus, you're going to have to fire really decent velocity ammunition. So you really want to choose that out if you're going to put a red dot on here. Very aggressive texturing and, uh, and it's very ergonomic, which is typical for your Walters. I mean, they just make very ergonomic grips, some of the best. Easy to load the magazine, which is also a plus for those who have weaker hand strength. 
So to me, this is an optimal gun for those who just can't rack a slide on a nine millimeter or they have trouble and it gives them a lot more confidence. And you still have 15 rounds of 22 Magnum. Well, there are some other cons, uh, the ammunition price. I mean, this is more expensive than your nine millimeter. So it's not gonna be cheaper to take this out and shoot. And it's not gonna be as readily available as your standard nine millimeter typically. But 22 Magnum is a very popular round, so it's out there in most places. With the aluminum slide, it makes it kind of feel, you know, just a lightweight option. And yet, because of the barrel and everything, it's a full weight pistol. And one of the things that my daughter said that really struck me was, it has very little recoil, but you feel power coming out the end of the barrel. And so that is a big plus, especially for those who are recoil sensitive. And it gives them a little more confidence. Guys, there's a lot of people out there that just will not carry something over a 22 long rifle because of the recoil. And this gives them a very solid option that ups the ballistic capability, gives them more self-defense capability, and yet is very easy on recoil. And I think that's one of the biggest pluses for this handgun. Also guys, there's just not a lot of choices when it comes to 22 Magnum. Again, the kel PMR-30, great gun. Also the Rock Island Armory 1911 and, and 22 Magnum. And then of course the older AMT Auto Mag. One of the problems with it is they're running about $1,000 in the used market. And from what I understand, reliability over the years has been a little bit hit or miss. Seems like with the Walther, the reliability is just excellent. So the Walther WMP, it's definitely different. Uh, and of course it's now added to a small line of semi-automatic pistols that are in 22 Magnum. But yet again, you've got that Walther quality standing behind it. Optics Ready has a really ergonomic grip, which is known for Walther. Uh, it's just very easy to shoot, and yet it can be a self-defense option, especially for those who are very timid when it comes to recoil. But man, these are a lot of fun to shoot, and guys, there's a number of different choices of ammunition out there, and so it's really great to see Walther stepping outside the lines to bring the WMP. And we really appreciate Gun Zone Deals for sending the WMP for this review. Guys, I've been an entrepreneur for most of my adult life, uh, whether having small businesses or just a side gig. And tax time has always been a nightmare. Tax Titans is a free marketplace that connects taxpayers to vetted tax professionals nationwide. They'll get you the quotes you need to find the right tax pro for you. And being tax professionals, they know all the laws to be able to minimize your tax liability. Tax Titans is nationwide. It's a veteran-owned company based right here out of South Carolina. Now go to tax-titans.com, use referral code SUIT00, and set up your free profile to find the right tax pro for you. And there'll be a link down below in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Then we have, ooh, there's no second strike capability. The hammer is in the down position. Let's do that again, 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 and again, and again, and again. A little bit of resistance. Okay. And so we're gonna do some first, so we're gonna do some first, okay. Uh, the what? okay. I was like, where are we gonna shoot? Where are you gonna shoot? Trying to figure out the best place. <laughs>